we're trying to do in our book is we're trying to say you first have to have, and this is, it doesn't matter if it's Lean Six Sigma, ISO 9001, CMMI, but we're trying to say through the use of standards that you have to have software and systems engineering processes established before you can look for ways to improve them, right? So you have to understand what you're doing as far as software and systems engineering. You have to have those processes mapped out. You have to be implementing those processes effectively. And then you can use a process improvement methodology like Lean Six Sigma value stream mapping, um, there's a lot of different artifacts, you know, methods, techniques that we talk about in the book, but whatever method you choose, <clears throat> um, you, you apply those to the process and then that gives you the improvement that you're looking for. But if you just go in, the problem with a lot of software engineering projects is that they're too ad hoc. So they don't have software and systems engineering techniques in, in place. Um, and you cannot make improvement, sustained improvement, if you don't have the process and, and, and procedures in place. Um, so trying to apply Lean Six Sigma to something that's simply ad hoc is not going to work. The uh, uh, people that do software for NASA uh, Space Shuttle and the Space Station have uh, a very high maturity uh, on that team. And, and from another uh, assessment point of view, they're at CMMI level five. And the way they got there was having a wealth of information measurements on all their processes. They really understood whether the process was on track, whether it was wobbly, what was causing the wobbliness, and they, were, they were zeroed in with many of these six Lean Six Sigma tools to get everybody in the team and their tools back on, on track with that project so that when team members said, I've completed this pro uh, project management event or I did this artifact, everybody had high confidence it really was completed. There was the wealth of, of data was used by the, by the, uh, by the team members to uh, keep them on track and for other team members to validate and verify what they've done. And that led to outstanding software uh, with very few uh, uh, defects and a high mission rate. Uh. Um, I was on a project um, called America's Army and it was a game development effort. Um, he just talked about a NASA effort, which is a very, very you know, a system that requires high uh, safety levels, high integrity, that kind of thing. Well, this was a, an effort for uh, commercial development type effort, even though it was for the Army. It didn't have the same kind of safety requirement, but that had a high commercial type of requirement. I mean, if you fail and you miss your market, nobody's going to play the game. So, but what we did is we, uh, we had all different kind of issues on the project, but, but one of them, what we did is that, you think of gamers, right, as the last bastion of like uh, the cowboy kind of developer. And you can't just go in and ask these guys to come in and say, well, we're going to do software process improvement now. You know, they're going to look at you and just go, you know what, you're crazy lady. You I'm going to go skateboarding I'm or something like that. <laughs> I mean, but these guys are, to they're brilliant. I mean, they're some of the most talented software developers mm -hmm. out there today. And they're really the next generation of software developers that are coming up. So, you know, what you do is you engage them. You say, you know, what are you having problems with? What is our area of, of uh, where we can make the most gains for, you know, you're sick of work until two in the morning? Well, let's figure out how to change your life. So we looked at different areas, um, hit areas configuration management, Here's, hit the release process was really uh, in, in bad shape. So we looked at from the beginning to the end, the whole release process and, and got them engaged and looked at ways to make that more lean. You know, what is it going to take to release the software? What are the most, what are the critical steps? Um, and they were the ones that really um, looked at ways to gain efficiencies in that area. And that's one project that comes to mind. Well, Toyota is, is world famous in the, and they, got, they call it TS, TPS, the Toyota Production System. And it's a Lean Six Sigma with all the, 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 uh, the, the tools under it, which are, are in our book. And, that manufacturing approach works well for the, the non-manufacturing areas. And one of them is a tool on just doing root cause analysis on a defect. When someone says I had to be up to two o'clock in the morning working on a bug, well you ask them, well, you know, why did this happen? And he tells you the high level. And then you ask, well, why did that happen? Yeah, and the te technique is called the five whys. Yes, and so by the time you get down to the fifth one, you're pretty close, if not on the root, root cause as to, and that's what, what he, the team should have been fixing, not him fixing the, the, uh, the after effects of it at two o'clock in the morning. And, and it's sort of funny because you'll see, um, you know, like three-year-olds do this. You know, you tell them, they'll ask you, why is the sky blue? And then you'll give them an answer, well, why? 
you know, and then you ask you answer them again. They go, but why? <laughs> you know, yeah, it, makes, really, it really makes you think. <laughs> it really makes you think. You know, it, it elicits thought, and that's a simplified analogy. But mm. that's really what you're trying to do is get to the root cause of why things are happening. So. And, ma and many times the, the answer isn't in the work area of the person discovering right. the problem. It's upstream. There, there mm -hmm. was something wrong with that process upstream that caused the error or, or allowed it to get through to the next, next level. And that's what you really need to cut off. Mm -hmm. uh, defects are much more expensive as they go through the process, uh, sometimes increasing a in magnitude of 10 from, from every major stage. You can pick and choose from any process improvement methodology. It depends on what your goal is. Um, it depends on what your end goal is. Like if you wanted to be, if you wanted to um, sort of apply CMMI and you wanted to be assessed, then you would want to go full bore. Mm -hmm. Same thing with ISO 9001. Lean Six Sigma, you know, your goal is to remove waste so and, and to become more lean and, and to make sure that you're taking the appropriate measures. So <clears throat> if, if, but if, if you don't have any software engineering practices or processes, you don't want to go full bore no. because there's not going to be anything right. to go full the, bore the, on. The, the limiting factor, I think, is is really how much measurements and you have. And what's your goal? Yeah. And and so a lot of organizations, uh, measurements are expensive. Yeah. And and sometimes uh, you get inaccurate information. Like, can you really trust the time charging on your you know on your mm -hmm. weekly timesheets? So when you have good information, the the analytic on the on the process team can say. Look, I'm looking at this data, and I've sliced and diced it, and I see a trend. This process has a problem. Now, let's go into that process and gather more, more measurements, and then use one of the, several of these uh, Lean Six Sigma tools to yeah. give us some insight. Well, and one of the one of the cautions about w when applying Lean Six Sigma is that the measures have to be appropriate to what your goals are, and so that's what you what you really have to sort of step back in the beginning and set your goals and set your measures mm -hmm. and make sure that because there's a tendency because Six Sigma, which, you know, it's lean and then there's Six Sigma. Six Sigma is very measurement intensive. And so there's, there can be a criticism with lean Six Sigma that it's too measure, it can be too measurement intensive. So you have to really pay attention yes. and balance that. And what you don't want to do is take the defects out of a part of the process which is fluffy. You know, you mm -hmm. don't really need it. Mm -hmm. You need to do the lean part first and really skinny down your process mm -hmm. that's appropriate for that one project. Now the next project the team works on may need to have more robust processes here and, and that's okay. The, and, and that's what our, our book tells you is how to, to take all these processes and tailor them down. And mm -hmm. So the, the lean, uh, lean techniques usually from a management point of view bring the most cost out. Mm -hmm. Now when the customer is, is complaining about chronic defects release after release, that's where the that's Six Sigma. That's an area Sigma, you need to look at. <laughs> yes, that's where the Six Sigma tools are, are very right, handful, right. very helpful.